Welcome to Access, the Language Cert International ESOL A2 level spoken qualification. And it, of course, focuses on the candidate's spoken skills. This exam consists of four parts, all of them assessing language based on practical experience and everyday English. The candidates are initially asked to share personal information and then, during the second part, asked to participate in a situational role play. During the third part, they participate in an interactive, communicative task along with their interlocutor. Finally, they are expected to produce a long turn after they've been given a topic and some time to prepare their response. Follow-up questions conclude this last part of the exam and the spoken exam itself. The exam setup is friendly as each candidate is examined individually, not with another candidate. The session is led by an interlocutor who does not assess the candidate but conducts the spoken exam in accordance with all language cert regulations. The whole session is recorded in digital format, uploaded to our examinations platform and sent to a fully trained independent language cert assessor to be marked. Remarking is available whenever required and the pass mark is an overall 50%. Part 1 aims to initially set the candidate at ease and elicit personal information. The first two questions, which aim at eliciting the candidate's name, its spelling, and where he or she is from, are not assessed. However, the next questions are assessed, and the candidate will be asked between three and five more questions. Part one lasts two minutes. Part 2 requires the candidate to take part in a situational role play. The aim of this task is for the candidate to use functional language in a range of real life situations. The candidate is presented with two or three situations and both the interlocutor and the candidate need to produce at least two turns each time. Part 2 lasts two minutes. In part three, the candidate and the interlocutor give and receive information in order to perform a communicative task. Without looking at each other's picture, they need to spot the differences by means of questions and answers. The duration of this part is two minutes. The fourth part of the spoken exam aims at assessing the candidate's ability to speak at greater length with minimal participation by the interlocutor. The candidate is given a topic, asked to prepare a response in half a minute and then talk about it for one minute. Then a few related follow-up questions conclude the exam. The duration of part four is three minutes. Part one, as already mentioned, aims at setting the candidate at ease and eliciting personal information about him or her. After eliciting the spelling of the candidate's name and where he or she comes from, questions which are not assessed, the interlocutor might ask the candidate a question related to one of the topics here, house and home. And for instance, the first assessed question might relate to which is his or her favourite room at home. Then the interlocutor will proceed with a second question taken from a second set, which in our case here relates to travel. The question might be one of the following, for instance. How did you travel here today? The interlocutor will go on with a third question from the third set. And, depending on the time left for this part of the spoken exam, might ask a fourth 
and a fifth question from the fourth and the fifth set. The duration of this part of the exam is two minutes. Part two, which lasts two minutes, requires the candidate to take part in a situational role play. He or she will be asked to take part in two or three situations. Both the candidate and the interlocutor need to produce approximately two turns during each situation. The candidate needs to ask or respond according to the interlocutor's instructions. Here is an example where the interlocutor sets the following situation. I work at the cinema. You want to see a film. I start. Hello, can I help you? The interlocutor initiates the situation and both the candidate and the interlocutor need to produce approximately two turns. Then the interlocutor provides a second situation where this time it is the candidate who has to start. An example of the type of situation might be one similar to I work in a restaurant and you want to book a table. You start. Here again, both the candidate and the interlocutor need to produce at least two turns. If there is time left, the interlocutor may present a third situation, which might be taken from the first or from the second set of situations. The duration of this second part of the spoken exam is two minutes. Part 3. In the third part of the spoken exam, the candidate and the interlocutor exchange information to perform a communicative task. The candidate is asked to identify the similarities and differences between his or her picture and the interlocutor's picture by asking and answering questions. Part four is the last part of the spoken exam, the long turn, and assesses the candidate's ability to speak at greater length with minimal participation by the interlocutor. The interlocutor chooses a topic. Here, the first topic of this set of topics asks the candidate to talk about his or her favourite game or sport for one minute. The candidate is provided with a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil and also 30 seconds to prepare his or her response. The duration of the long term needs to be one minute. Finally, after the candidate's response, up to four related follow-up questions will conclude this part and the spoken exam itself. If the chosen topic was about the candidate's favourite game or sport, the follow-up questions might be very similar to When did you learn to play this game or sport? Or What other game or sport do you like? Or Is it better to play games by yourself or with friends? The overall duration of this fourth part of the spoken exam is three minutes. You can find more information about our spoken exam in our qualification handbook on our website. Candidates are assessed in terms of four criteria. Task fulfilment and coherence, that is the candidate's ability to manage the tasks adequately for the level and link the utterances into coherent speech. Accuracy and range of grammar, in other words, the candidate's ability to demonstrate a range and control of grammar. Accuracy and range of vocabulary, which relates to his or her ability to demonstrate a range and control of vocabulary. And lastly, pronunciation, intonation and fluency which measures the candidate's ability to connect utterances, maintain the flow and engage in effective communicative exchanges. Candidates are awarded up to three marks per criterion and can collect up to 12 marks. 
the candidate's raw score out of 12 is translated into a scaled score out of 50. Successful candidates are those who attain at least 50% of the overall scaled score, that is at least 25 marks out of 50. If they do exceptionally well and collect more than 34 marks, they will be awarded a high pass. Here are some pages from the Interlocutor's Questions booklet, the four pages on the left, and there's the candidate's task sheet on the right. For more information on this component of the exam and for support materials, simply follow this link.